Thanks for joining us today on The Perfect X. My name is Sherry, and here's my co-host, Ben. Hi, everyone. This is Ben. And today we're going to talk about cultural differences in dating and pretty much in perspective of uh, me being Canadian, Ben being American, but moving to Mexico, growing up in Mexico, and then both of us now in America dating, single and living life. Um, But before we start, I do want to put a disclaimer. Um, These are just our perspectives based on our personal experiences. So there's not a generalization of either culture or judgment towards either culture. It's just us talking about our experiences. So throw that in there. (laughs) You got to be careful now, you know? (laughs) I know, I know. We don't want to offend anyone. I mean, this is just our perspective of, of how it's been now living in America coming from different places, you know? different backgrounds and different experiences prior kind of thing yeah correct I thought about that right before I was like oh my god I better put that in there because (laughs) this is 2023 (laughs) and it's just different now but Ben before we jump in I think everybody wants to know what happened with that girl from the beer garden (laughs) (laughs) so um right after the show or after our recording I texted her and I was like, hey, it was so nice bumping into you. Uh, hope we can hope to see you soon or something like that. And I did not get an answer until that was Monday. And so yesterday, I, I so nothing, no answer. And yesterday, my friend, um, who I hang out with a lot, she was like, hey, guess what? There's a um, trivia night at that place where she works she's like do you want to go and I'm like yeah sure let's go and so I was like well I'll just see her there and whatever you know and so while I was driving there she texted me and she's like hey sorry I've been super busy um and I wasn't able to answer back right away but um it was so nice to see you too hope to see you too and then so I was like hey by the way are you working today and she's like yes I'm here and I'm like, oh, well, uh, funny story. I'm heading that way because uh, I was going to go and play trivia. And she's like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot that there was trivia tonight. So I saw her there. And um, I was like, hey, how's it going? Fine, fine, fine. And I went to play trivia. And I'm sitting down having a beer with my friend. And my friend is like, hey, let's go to a baseball game tomorrow. Um, because they made on Thursdays they do pups and pints and so you can take your dog and my friend has this really nice uh dog and so uh she's like hey why don't you invite her and so I went over and I was like hey what are you doing on Thursday I'm like are you working or she's like no I have it off and so I invited her and I texted her and I was like hey if you want to go she told me that she might be able to go because uh, some her sister's visiting or something like that. So she, it's not a for sure thing. But if she does, we're going to maybe hang out on Thursday, um, go watch some baseball. And Wait, just hang I out. have a couple questions. First yes. of all, how ballsy of you to still show up to her work, even though you didn't get an answer back from her? I mean, I got to commend you. Well, I mean, I was... I mean, if she didn't answer or if she answered, I mean, I was still going to go. It's not like I'm not ever going to go to that place. I've I've been there before. I like hanging out there. It's a nice beer garden. And I like playing trivia. And there was trivia that night there. And I'm like, well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm I'm not going to like, even if she didn't respond, I was still going to go and hang out at that place. Like, it's not like I like it. I like it. I like that you had the balls to because most people wouldn't. Yeah. So. So, because yeah. really, you have to live your life. Like, if, if, if it was one thing, if you were going just because of her, you clearly weren't. And at the end of the day, you just can't, like, you win some, you lose some. If she never messaged back, it wouldn't make a difference. Like, you just move on with life and be cordial, and you would give her your space when, her, her space when you were at her work. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, I would still say hi to her, and I would never be like, hey, why didn't you text me back, or that's yeah, nice yeah. of you you know like no i'm like if you didn't want to answer it's fine no worries i mean i'm still gonna hang it out should be. it should yeah. be that way like if if that's like a place that you go to or like you know i mean it happens you go to a restaurant you really like the waiter a lot you finally get the courage to ask them out let's say they 
it doesn't work out. I mean, you shouldn't completely uphold your whole life or like completely change everything. But at the same time, you should just respect that person's space and not be in their face either. But do you like, you know, which seems like exactly what you were planning on doing. But I mean, it's, it's ironic that she messaged right before. Yeah, it was it was like really weird because I had just like started driving and I got a text message from her. But were you also like, oh, thank God. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) A little bit. Yes, I was like, yeah, because it would have been kind of awkward if I just show up and she's like, oh, sorry, I never texted. You know, like I was not expecting anything, but but I I think it could have been kind of awkward for her because she never answered but I mean well the first time it's awkward for everybody you know yeah but then after you get over it but but it is fun you probably were like oh my god thank you god thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah Please. yeah and so oh go ahead go ahead no no oh yeah so so yeah so um I'm with my friend sitting down and she's like invite her to the baseball game and I'm like okay okay and so we're leaving the place and she's like text her right now and tell her hey nice seeing you hope you can make it on Thursday and I'm like no, I'm not going to text her right now. Like, it's barely Tuesday. Like, come on. Like, and she's like, no, do it. Notice. Yeah, you yeah, got to give course. her notice. That's the perfect amount of notice, like two days. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, again, really nice seeing you. And hopefully you can make it on Thursday. Um, We're going to go there around eight. And, um, and yeah, just keep me posted. And that was it. And I haven't heard back from her. So, I mean, I don't know. They're still tomorrow, right? Well, let me tell you two things before I want to go back to not hearing from her. I want to kind of pinpoint something for all the listeners. There's a reason why I say two days is perfect timing to give someone a heads up. This is a secret. Well, it's not really that much of a secret, but I don't think guys are aware. Women time washing their hair. Like we try to go as many days based on what we have to do on whether we have to wash our hair or not. And so if a guy tells me like Monday, hey, do you want to go out, you know, tonight? And I was like on day three and I was trying to push on day four of not washing my hair. Now I have really oily hair, so I can never go that far. But I know like for me, it's two days. I most likely will say no if I just am halfway through the day and I just don't want to do my hair. (laughs) Had he told me two days ago, I probably would have washed my hair the day before. It would be on day one of my clean hair. You know what I mean? So that's why two days is like a great thing. I'm not saying we won't do last minute. I mean, if you catch me on the first day, I haven't washed my hair. I'm probably going to say yes. But if you catch me on the wrong timeline, most likely I'm going to say no. So two days is always perfect. So I think your friend was right in saying you should do it on the Tuesday, even right after you saw her. It was not a big deal. I personally don't like a person that takes that long to respond back. I don't think she's that, not that she's not that interested. Maybe she's just not that respectful. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, I, I wouldn't message her again and ask her again. Like you put it out there. She said, I'll let you know. If she hasn't said anything by Thursday, just move on. I wouldn't. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. Uh, no, yeah, I'm not going to say like, hey, so what's up? Are you making it? Because she told me sh- that her sister might come into town. And so, I, of course, I want to also respect that, you know, like. But um, she could also respect you by saying like, hey, I'm really sorry. I'm not going to be able. She should be the one that reaches out after that. You yes, know I mean? yes, of course. Yeah. And and that's what I'm going to do. I mean, if she can make it cool and if she can't, well, I mean, too bad. She's missing out. And then that's it. You're not going to ask her out ever again after or if she doesn't say anything? Well, uh, I think I'm going to just wait until she responds. Or let's, if I ever Let's say go she back says again. nothing. Let's say she says nothing from now on. Are you ever going to uh, reach out again? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I kind of agree with you. Like, I think the polite thing to do if someone tells me, like, hey, Friday, let's do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not sure I have stuff going on, which is fair. People have lives. If on mm-hmm. Friday, I don't message back and say like, hey, I'm really sorry, but actually I'm going to hang out with my sister tonight. That's this. If you don't do that, that's disrespectful. It's best to move on. Because honestly, like the beginning way you treat one another really sets the tone. I don't believe in that old school, like play hard to get and blah, blah, blah. Like yeah. be difficult. We're, people really care about how you are respected nowadays and they don't forget that. So I think yeah. you're doing all the right steps. Yeah. And again, I mean, she, when I was leaving, I'm like, okay, bye. Um, hope to see you soon or whatever. And she's like, yeah, text me. And so I was like, okay. And so that's why my friend was like, well, she told you text you or text her. So that's why I was just like, okay, I'll text you. And just, hey, just a reminder, it's the game is on Thursday. We're going to go around eight. 
And I mean, I was going to put like, hey, if you want to tell your sister or something. But then I was like, no, if she wants to go, she'll probably say, hey, is it okay if I bring my sister? You know, like. You could have invited. I think you could have. I think you've done everything right up until now. But I think it would have been nice if she said, hey, my sister's in town. I'd be like, hey, she's more than welcome to join us, too. Because it's your friends and your thing. So it's yeah. kind of your responsibility to invite. Like, I always, yeah, she could say that. But, like, I always feel a little bit rude being like, hey, do you mind if I bring so You know what I mean? So if it's yeah. not my thing. So, yeah, so that's the one thing I'd advise. But it's yeah. done now. But yeah, I mean, I, and I'm not going to text her right now. And, hey, by the way, you can bring your, no. I mean, no, no, no. it's done. And I'm not going to text her back unless she texts me back. But it seems like she's interested. It just, I mean, she does need to be faster on her messages, but she does seem interested. I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll see. Well, next yeah. week when we do our next podcast, I'm going to ask you. Of she course. came on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All, All right. right. So you moved from Mexico. I mean, if people didn't hear our first podcast, you were born in California. You Correct. moved to Mexico. at how, how young were you again? I was about to turn three. So three. two. Okay. Yeah. And then you moved back from Mexico to Austin. Um, like, nine years ago, 2014. And I left Iran when I was one and I've never been back. So although I'm Persian through my family and, and really from being born there, I really am Canadian. Um, I've lived in Vancouver until I was 27 and I moved to LA 10 years ago, almost 10 years. Um, and so that is my story. So at 30, I'm 37 now single. So tell me what your, and I know you first moved here, you were in a relationship, but then after you became single. So what was your first perception or thoughts or experience first time dating someone in the U.S.? So it was, it was compared, different. Compared to Mexico. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, it was totally different. Um one of the cultural things in Mexico, and I mean, this is years ago. I, I don't know now because um, the last five years that I was there, I was in a relationship. And so, I mean, I, I really did not. When, when I was growing up, it was more of like if you wanted to even kiss a girl or something, like you had to be in a relationship. You had to be boyfriend and girlfriend, you know? If you wanted something more than happened. And here, the first time I went out with this girl, well, I went out once. And the second time, we were already having sex. And so oh, really? it was it was like such, like, it was different. Like, I was okay with it because, I mean, at the yeah, end, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> but, but, I mean, I, I get we all want sex. Like, I mean, yeah, no, it's, I mean, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, like, I didn't know it was going to move, like, that quick. And, and that's something that I feel. Now, I, I got to ask this. Like, wait, yes. I got to stop you. I got to ask you because in Persian culture, I'm not saying it moves that quick, but if it does move that quick or it happens, girls tend to lie about it. So I'm curious in Mexico, is it that it doesn't happen that quick or people just don't cop up to it? Um, I think it just doesn't happen that quick. Like, Again, I don't know how it is now. It's been nine years since I haven't been there, and it's been almost 15 years since I've even tried to have a relationship with someone from Mexico. Boy, no. But this is all based there. on our so, own experiences. Correct, so. yeah. So, so yeah, but, but I grew up with that type of, like, oh, if I want to be with this girl, we need to be, like, there has to be a commitment. There has to be, like, a status uh oh boyfriend girlfriend thing got it got it and huh. and i feel like here in the states it's a lot more open on like yeah i mean we can more hook casual. up we can yeah we can hook up we're nothing we're i mean we're just going out and over there like the going out that shit does not happen like that like messing around and stuff like that that does not happen like a lot like that yeah so i i don't i don't know if it's cultural if it's there's um mexico is like super religious and and i don't know if it's also like that like oh it's a sin or you know i think i mean it really depends like i know for 
the Persian culture, it's so taboo to be sleeping around. So, I mean, it happens a lot and they lie about a lot. Like I remember the first time I slept with my first time I slept with a Persian guy and I I told everybody and he was like shocked. He was like, people usually like they lie about it. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to tell everybody I've got a big mouth. And like, it was so taboo for him because girls pretend to be virgins. So it is interesting that you bring that in, you know? I mean, I'll tell you something like for me with not like the sexual thing, it was completely, completely different atmosphere in dating and take the sex aside because in Canada like if you want to have sex on the first day I know my old boss you know slept with his you know wife on the first date so they were together forever after so that was never a problem yeah but for me but uh, they're they're Canadian Canadian oh yeah they're Canadian yeah and um but for me the big shocking change and it wasn't that much a shock because I had experienced a little bit of it on a girl's trip in New York before. And I had been to the U S a lot. So my sister had lived in uh, California for like, I think 10 plus years before I moved. And I used to come visit her all the time. So it's not like I hadn't been to America, but like as a single dating, like moving out here kind of experiencing, it was such a cultural shock for me. And I also know this for my friends when they come and visit. And when I first moved out here, a lot of my girlfriends would come visit and they were all single. Or but, had, uh, wait, wait. Are they coming from to visit from Canada or are they from like... Vancouver? From Vancouver. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, okay, yeah. And um, they all had the same shock, shocking experience, and we also had the same shocking experience when we went on a girls' trip to New York a couple years prior to me moving, and that was that in Vancouver the general culture is that you just don't really approach people, and in America guys were coming up to us like from every which way, shape, or corner. Like they just come up. Like guys aren't that unaggressive like it's not that they're aggressive they just have it in the culture that you approach one another and I had dated someone right before I moved to LA and I actually met him because I was at the bar with a bunch of friends and he was staring and this is in Vancouver and he was staring and staring and because our culture like very rarely do you go up to people or in you know experiences I went up to him saying are you going to stare or are you going to ask for my number <laughs> like which is it going to be you know uh, and it was so long ago, he actually gave me a business card. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> um, but uh, when I first moved to LA, it was kind of crazy because I just remember like, I'd be walking my dog and like guys would literally pull over and start talking to me and come up to me, come out of the car, ask for my number. Like I even had one guy, now these are a couple years apart, but he did it to me twice. Like it was the same guy twice. And we, I didn't even recognize it was a different car um and I mean it was kind of shocking like it was shocking being hit on so confidently and all the time like all the time and it's not just about me like I have like I said girlfriends that would come visit and they're like man we can't even go out without meeting guys like didn't matter what you were doing if if you're in the grocery store guys come up to you if you're out guys come up to you like if you're walking just on the street they came up to you and we loved it and like honestly like like one of the girlfriends I had um, gone to New York with she thought it was just like a New York thing and because when, when we went to a girl's trip in New York we literally had like guys coming up to us all the time like all the time and we were like from Vancouver and we weren't used to we thought we were like the hottest things that ever like ever came <laughs> out you know when if you look back at our pictures we look like we were 12 and we really were not the hottest things but like we just hadn't experienced that like you we literally got hit on everywhere we went drinks were bought for us everywhere we went actually it was right before Christmas that we went to New York and we were clubbing the whole time we were there. And then we came back home to Vancouver and that weekend we went out and drinks were bought for us like crazy in New York. And then we were in a club in Vancouver and I was at the bar waiting to order. And I'm, was, I'm not really a shot drinker and I just saw these like pink shots. So I asked the guys like, what are you drinking? And in New York, they were like, oh my God, have a shot with us. Have a, we'll order another one. I wasn't fishing for that. I was really actually curious what it was. But it really made me laugh because like coming from New York, getting drinks, like, you know, showered in drinks, this guy asked me if I wanted a sip of his shot back in Vancouver. And I was like, uh, <laughs> like so the, so you, you do feel there's also a big difference between like just Canada huge, and, huge. you know, culturally huge for me, at least for me, like I'm, I'm telling you, like 
even like my that when that girlfriend I went to New York with, she went on a separate trip to San Diego with some other girls. And she was like, man, like American guys just, she's like, I don't feel, and she's stunning. She's absolutely stunning. She's Lebanese. She's half Lebanese. She's like a mix and like just a stunning girl. And I remember like this was years, years, years ago. And she told me like, I felt like the hottest thing, just li- like just existing in San Diego because you're coming from like a culture where like, no, but you get like dressed up or like whatever you do to go out and like nobody comes up to you. And then you come to like California or, or the States and guys just literally are pouring out of every corner hitting on you. So yeah, it's a confidence boost. I know. And, and like, I, I feel... I, even in my nine years living here, I don't really do that. Like, for me, going up and asking for a phone number, like, I did this with this girl because I already knew her and, like, Mm -hmm. we have talked before. But if I had never met this girl before and, like, just saw her, I, I still don't have that American confidence of just going up and Hey, how's it going? Like, I don't know how to start a conversation to try to ask you for your number. What about your guy friends that are from America? Do they do that? Um, yes. Yes, I have several guys that they're like, yeah, I just go up. I mean, I have those introvert guys but or introvert friends that I have. And, but most of them, they're like, yeah, I mean, I just go up and ask for a number. And, or, or they're like, yeah, just go up and ask her for her number. I'm like, what am I going to say? Like, hey, can I have your number? Like, I just don't know how to start that conversation. And it's because how I grew up, I, I feel like for me, it's I still have that mentality of if something is going to happen, I need to kind of start a relationship. And it's not just going to be like, uh, I don't know, just hang out and just get to know her. Like, I don't know. I, it, it's, isn't that crazy, it's though? It just, it's, yes. it's crazy. It's like such a cultural shift you know yeah so what do you consider good aspect like what do you prefer do you prefer the fact that people go up to each other here or the more serious aspects of Mexico no I mean I I like this more I think I just have to get more involved in it and like be more I don't know um open to it but I like it and I like that girls also can go up like what you do you know like hey can are are you just gonna be staring at me like I like that I like when girls do that um I don't I don't get offended I don't feel it's like oh she's just like like just trying to hook up or no I mean I like that um but I just feel I have not implemented that <laughs> in my you life know but you know it's kind of funny because that was Vancouver when I went up I because they, they do it so much in LA, I've gotten so lazy. <laughs> I'm not very good at it anymore. <laughs> so I very rarely have to go up to, I mean, the last time I did it was to a whole table of guys. And my girlfriend, she's from Iran. She's like, never done that kind of stuff. It's just not, like, there's nowhere to even go out to do that kind of stuff. Now, she's lived in the States for 10 years. Um, but it's just still not in her nature either, being from a different culture. So the first time I did in front of her, she thought I was joking when I said I was going to go up to that table. <laughs> she like couldn't <laughs> believe it. And I'll never forget, like I walked up to the table and I was like, are you guys all single? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, do you guys want some girls to hang out with you? And they were like, yeah. So I waved over my girlfriend and she was in such shock, but it looked like she was disgusted. Like I, knowing her, I know like that's her resting bitch face. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> so she, she was walking to her table and the guys were like, she doesn't look like she wants to be here. I'm like, no, no, that's just her face. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? But she was mostly in shock because she thought I was joking because they were actually on the way to the bathroom. But I was like, no, man, I'm from Vancouver. Like, if you wanted to get hit on, this is what you had to do. Like, you know, so it was the first time she saw it. But I also have gotten lazy. So like the opposite of you, like I don't do it as much anymore because like just for instance, we were at the bar this weekend sitting at the bar and at least like six or seven different groups of guys came up to us and so it it just I've gotten lazy (laughs) it's the opposite and so now okay what about you as a girl I mean you you told me you just or you get lazy right now but you're up to it I am if there's a guy across if there's a guy so I'm so particular in my look that will make me not go out of my shell. It's not that, it, sorry, I shouldn't say shell, out of my laziness. Because I really don't have a comfort shell. Um, yeah. 
it's really more of like I prefer being hit on so I prefer a guy it's like I much prefer a guy to to come to me first even online like except for Bumble because the girl has to I yeah. find if I like a guy on like Hinge let's say I liked him first and we match I prefer that even if I initiated it because on Hinge how it works is like I can send a like to you and you can accept it. So you actually see who liked you versus Bumble's like you both have to like each other to see. So on Hinge, I can send you a like. And if mm -hmm. you see that I like you and you accept it, I still prefer that he messages me for, first because I like that in a man. But if I do see a guy across the room that I, you know, we catch eye or whatever, I try to wait to see if he'll come first because I prefer that. If he doesn't, I'm like, fuck it, I don't want to lose my chance. And I do, like, crazy things. Like, I've been on dates. It sounds so bad. But, like, I've been on dates where across from someone really... I don't get attracted that much to guys. So if someone really pulls my attention and has, like, my look, I'm like, oh, okay, I don't want to miss my chance. If I feel a connection or some kind of chemistry. So I'll even write my number on a paper. I've done that on a date a couple of times. I feel bad saying this. But <laughs> <laughs> I put my name on a paper and I'll, I'll like, just slide it to them you know or you know if I'm not on a date and I'm with my friends and he's like there and I feel chemistry I'm not going to miss the chance and I'm okay being turned down like if it doesn't you know like there yeah, was even, oh yeah like there was recently like a guy across the room and it was a really small like pub area kind of place and there was another guy talking to us and I told the guy I'm like I'm not interested like he was trying to talk to my girlfriend he's like oh like are you guys kind of just I'm like no I'm, I'm not interested in like this situation but I'm interested in that guy across the room. And he was like, want me to go talk? So I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't mind sending him over. And the guy was like, no, I got to go. He, the guy wasn't looking at us to be given. The guy that I was interested in, he never looked yeah. that way. And, and he told the guy, when he walked over there, he said, I saw a ring on him. And he said he was married. So, like, that was the end of that. But, I mean, you know, I did I mean, yeah, I but... clearly see the ring. If I had, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> but... so, okay, so you have friends. Most of our friends, you've told me they're not like from uh, like Thank america oh, yeah, yeah or yeah. no yeah what about your friends from america like that are born and raised are they like like you like do they go up to God girls friends or girl i mean to I mean, girl girlfriends it's been, my girlfriends my american girlfriends i don't have uh i have one single one she she so she won't go up but she'll definitely position herself in the right area if that makes sense like my like she'll put herself like if she thinks the guy is really cute across the room she'll make sure to like be in his area do you know what i mean like she's not shy for that or maybe yeah. she'll start a conversation she won't like be as blunt about it as i will but she won't also be like standing across the room waiting for him to come do you know what i'm trying to say yeah she does that my other friends most of them aren't single girlfriend wise like most of my girlfriends are actually married but um <laughs> Yeah, I'm, that I'm like, I'm, that, that's that's with me too. When you ask me that question, I'm like, "Well, most of my friends are, or they're either Latinos, they're like from Mexico, or they're yeah. from like South America, and they all speak Spanish, or they're married." And so, I I hang out with like my friends that are usually they're girls and they're single, but they're also like looking for something, and we're just like. Like my friend this this time, she's like my my wingman. <laughs> well, I hear you. Like, what's really crazy is most of my friends are guys, and I I in general my whole life I just get along with men better. Um, but there I have a lot of single guy friends, and they do they do hit on all my American ones. They do hit on girls. I've never seen one of them not have the balls. And even like look wise, they could be all over the board. They do go up to girls. They have no problem doing that. I've never seen any of them have problems. I mean, they don't know. Sometimes they're stuck, they need advice or whatever, but they will yeah. do it. Um, I, again, I'm like you, when it comes to my girlfriends, I have very few girlfriends, and the ones I do, I'm typically like the sister wife, like the extra, the third wheel, the fifth wheel. <laughs> but <laughs> I do have a few single friends. I have like probably less than a handful of single friends, and I would say that the American one does position herself. My Persian girlfriend definitely does not do any of the above. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really right. That's really I how mean, they are. yeah, yeah. So, so it's it is uh, an American thing of being ballsy and just going up to anyone and just be like, "Hey, 
I think so. Yeah. But the flip side of that, I will say the difference, like one thing I do prefer out of my Vancouver culture is that because we're so relaxed, which is what causes people not really to go up to each other. Like in general, people mind their own business. They don't go up. They don't confront. They don't like, they just kind of do their own thing. It's just a very mind your own business, relaxed culture. I do notice, and I've had past experience with my friends even now, one thing I, I like about them, like, you know how we last episode, we talked about how persistent people are when you're not interested. Um, I don't see that out of any Vancouver culture. Like, mostly they're like, oh, cool. Like, I'm not interested. Great. Not in, fine. I don't care. Like, there's no persistence or going after you or trying to convince you otherwise. Like, they just don't do that in that culture. And I do envy that. So part yeah. of that relaxed, not hitting on you, like, I notice like when my friends end things with guys in Vancouver, guy or girl wise, uh, they don't have any follow up persistence. Maybe some drunk texts. I have seen that, <laughs> but there's yeah, no I mean, I, I feel like that happens quite. Like, I mean, that might be drunk texts. Yeah, <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> that so another question that I have: you being Persian and well, Canadian, do you feel like? Or have you, like, the type of guy you're looking for? Like, does he have to be Persian? Would you prefer that? Would you prefer he's Canadian? You don't mind he's, like... Sorry, it's, it's cutting out a bit, but... um. Oh, sorry. I, I, cut I, out, but I think you pretty much were asking me, do they have to be Persian or Canadian, right? Correct, yeah. Like, do you have, like, a preference? Not Not that you're, like, oh, it has to be them, but do you prefer that? Totally. So I was raised that it didn't matter. Like my parents always said, like, just date for someone that you love, you know? So I was raised right. that it didn't matter. I didn't really grow up in the Persian culture. I know much about the Persian culture until later in life. I actually never had a Persian boyfriend until I was like 24, 25. Mm -hmm. So, and now for me, what matters, and it's really kind of crazy. Like, so as long as culture, like they have culture, like I don't consider myself, it's really confusing when you're like two cultures, you know, like I'm not te technically Persian and I'm not fully Canadian either. Like I'm kind of a mix of both cultures. So yeah. I do really well with people who are also understanding like of different cultures. Like I do well with like Europeans or like, you know, anybody that has some sort of culture in them. Like I don't mind Persians. I don't do very well with people who are, just from Iran even though my girlfriend is just like I was using it for 10 years but like she's like great and whatever but dating wise I don't know I haven't had much success with people who are like only been in America for like 10 years you know but yeah. um I think I do really well with immigrants or someone who comes from an immigrant family that grew up in North America that's what I like and there's a lot of reasons for that because like I don't mind different beliefs like for instance I'm Christian my best friend's an atheist my other girlfriend is like believes in like spirits and not you know what I mean like I don't mind <laughs> <laughs> like whatever I don't care what someone's belief is I'm vegetarian I don't need my significant other to be vegetarian I don't mind if my significant other is an atheist I don't mind those things um like I've learned my one of my girlfriends is Jewish I've learned so much about the Jewish culture I love it like I don't mind those things as long as the foundation is the same. Like, for instance, my best friend growing up was Lebanese. My other one's Italian. When we went into each other's home, we know how to behave in front of each other's families. You know what I mean? Like, yes. if you get invited to dinner, they know how to do that. And all of my cousins are older, and they've all married. Like, one of them married a Mexican. And, like, for instance, he comes in to our family home or like into family experiences with the same kind of cultural expectations. Like we know how to behave in front of each other's parents, you know, whereas someone that didn't have maybe like an immigrant or of any sort doesn't always have the same. Like I remember like my fully Canadian friends saying things in front of their parents that like is unheard of, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I have very whitewashed parents. Like I say a lot to them now, but like I still don't in front of their friends do you know what I mean like I wouldn't go in front of my mom's friends and say a lot of things whereas like my friends that aren't from a different culture they might do that you know or like for instance I did date a purely purely Canadian guy who like never came up and said hello to my parents when he came in the house like in Vancouver a lot of people have basement suites so like and there's an entrance in there 
So yeah. it's really funny because like my certain friends from different backgrounds, we always, always went to guys and like all the kids always hung out in the basement suite. So like if you came over, you're like, you went to the basement suite and you wouldn't see the parents. But like my cultured friends, we always walked upstairs and said hello to the people's parents before like hanging out with our friends it was just very important to us yeah for for me that's natural too like for me that's like if i go to someone's house and the parents are there i'm always gonna say hi you know like and for some reason i'm great with parents <laughs> yeah me too me too like my parents as friends like my friends parents always love like they love me it's like i was the worst kid out of everybody but i was always favored so that's exactly yeah. it. like so you're Mexican and I think it's an immigrant thing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, and my dad's Mexican, my mom's from the States. So I also feel I have a bit of that, of that culture where my mom is like, she was like, or she is like open-minded in, in a whole bunch of stuff. My dad is a bit more cold minded because of being in such a, like a religious culture where they're Catholic and, you know, but once they got together, it was a perfect mix for my siblings and I. Like, we we learned, like, all that cultural Mexican thing, like, always be respectful, um, say thank you, you know, help as much as you can if you're in someone else's house, you know, like, wash dishes or, you know, yes. like, always yes. be there. And 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 so I I love that. And so when I'm looking for a relationship or for someone, something in a girl, I kind of look for something like that too. Not that she has to be Mexican, but that has that. And what you're saying is that that cultural mix that I feel it just makes you, I mean, it changes your mind completely. Like you, you know, you're an immigrant, so you know, you cannot like just act like you normally would act like you would have to be more respectful. It's the foundation. It's, it's the foundation right? of the house. Like, as long, I always believe, like, you don't have to do everything the same way. Like, let's say they're even religion wise, like, you may have ways of dealing with things and they have ways of dealing with things. As long as you're respectful, that's fine, you know? But the yeah. actual foundation has to be the same. As in, when you per walk into a situation, are you dealing with it in what you, like, do I deem it appropriate and you deem it appropriate? Is it the same level? You know what I mean? Like, like, for instance, like, I wouldn't go in front of your mom and just be talking about my sex life. You know what I mean? Like, is it the same foundation where some people that's totally fine for? And it's maybe not even just culturally, like, it's just having the same understanding of what you and I find appropriate and do they match, you know? Yeah. And usually, and the reason why we even bring up culture, I think, is because usually those foundations are usually brought from your culture, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally feel what you're saying. And yeah. Um, and I do kind of would like that whoever I'm dating speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's not fair. You can't. Even... <laughs> well, I know. I know. I, I mean, that's not that's not something like, oh, it's a deal breaker. But no, yeah, but I don't I, care what they are. As long as when I talk shit they, in another <laughs> language, they understand. <laughs> I mean, I just I have so many Mexican friends or people or like friends that speak Spanish. And I love speaking Spanish. There's so many things that I can express better in Spanish. Like, I, like, I, I don't know. I, I'll give you one thing. Listen, I didn't really have any Persian girlfriends. So I never really understood this. You know, I do have girlfriends that spoke French. So I've had that experience. But like in Vancouver, people speak French. So you, I didn't really get to use it often, you know. And yeah. I will give you this. I have a very, like one of my best girlfriends is um, African-American. And me and her are like the biggest shit talkers and we're both really funny. So what sucks is sometimes we're in public and we want to say something and we can't, you know? And now that I have my Persian girlfriend and you just openly like in the middle of the bar talking shit about someone right to their face in another language and they have no idea. I'm not going to lie. Like it's a very <laughs> like fun thing to do. So I don't agree with, I don't need someone to speak Persian. I don't agree with your Spanish thought. Like, but I will give it to you that being able to speak the same language when no one else can, although you're in America, a lot of people can. Um, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Like it is. It a is. Lot of fun. And it, it is. is true. Like you can't express something. Like sometimes I try to tell my other girlfriends from a different culture, like this is what it means in Persian. Like there's no translation. Like, you know, like, like one of the things that we say, like if you translate it in, in 
like like we lovingly call each other an idiot in Persian or we'll say I'll eat your liver like that's not really something that translates well, unless you're a yeah. cannibal in, in English <laughs> So, so in Spanish, remember I was telling you like, oh, nicknames and stuff like that, that you don't know, like that a guy just calls you babe out of the blue, right? Like, mm-hmm. hey, babe, how are you doing? And I get that. But there's there's small nicknames or, or little love, how you call your girlfriend. And one of them is calling her gorda. Gorda means fat. And... <laughs> But it's not, in it's, yeah, but you cannot say that in English. Like, it just does not translate the same. But in Spanish, it's like so many couples are like, hey, Gorda, can you do this for me? Like, even though you're calling, hey, fatty, can you do this? Like, it's not in a demeaning way. It's, it's a, it's a nice little, I don't know how, like, I mean, and so just imagine dating a girl and she's like, let you call her that for like five months. And then she's like, oh, what does that mean, by the way? And you're like, oh, it means you're fat. <laughs> yeah. And, and people get like, and the girls can be like super skinny and they still call them gorda. But it's just a, a like a little, I don't know. And, and it's, it's and for me, it's, it's endearing. endearing. Language. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and I love that. I love that. And, and so, I feel like I could never say that to I, anyone else. And and I have I a friend. People will kind of get used to it. Like, I think if my boyfriend spoke Spanish and that was endearing in his language, you know, I think he would, yeah. I think he would let them. Well, I mean, I, and I would hope that. I would hope that. I have a really good friend of mine. She is from Ecuador. She's been living in the States for many years. And her and I, we speak Spanish all the time. And she always calls me Gordo. Hey, Gordo, this. Hey, Gordo, that. And I'm like, ah, Gordo. And so we we call each other that. But it's just like our little nickname that we have for each other. And and some people, we, I, I introduced it to some of my friends. And I was like, hey, Gordo, can you bring me another beer? And my friends looked at me and they're like, why are you calling her? Like, because it's like, <laughs> it's like calling, hey, babe, can you bring me another beer? Like, it's, it's that much, like, it's that endearing, like that. And so I'm like, oh, no, that's just how we call each other. And they're like, oh, okay, okay. Like, they were like, oh, these guys are fucking or something. But we're not. I mean, and that's just how we call each other. And so. That's actually really funny. So, yeah. So I miss that part. Like, I, I kind of want that in my relationship. But, I mean, it's not, again, not a deal breaker. But it is it is nice. And I also like to, music, for me, I need music in my life. And I listen to a lot of music in Spanish. And I like to dedicate songs. Or like, hey, listen to this song. Made me think of you. And I hate that if it's in Spanish. I'm and they like, can translate it. Like, I love dancing to Spanish wor- music. And I don't know a lick of Spanish. And if I was to look up the lyrics and someone said, oh, this made me think of you. I would look up the lyrics and translate it. I would find that super sweet. Well, yeah, it's but not, what if the song not says... Bad I know, but what if the song says, hey, Gorda, te quiero mucho, yeah, hey, which is, hey, fatty, I love you. <laughs> like, no, it, like the yeah. translation does not go the same way. But It's not but, as big of a deal breaker as you think. Okay. I think it's not, I, but I hear no, you. No, 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 again, it's again. One I, hope, it's one of your hope. Of course. Paths. Yes, of course. I, I, again, I said, it's not a deal breaker. Any girl that's listening, it's not a deal breaker for me, okay? I'm just, <laughs> I, I. That's one of my things that I would like, but it's not. We're just trying any... to make sure that the listeners still reach out to you. So it's yes. very interesting. You know, <laughs> yes, and... the opposite no. of that, of yours, you're fat. I, in Vancouver, so I'm kind of a Canadian thing, but in Vancouver, when someone, a guy, when a guy is too skinny, you call him pinner, which means like they're thin as a pin. And okay. it's, a, it's actually kind of like an insult, but... but I have a guy friend that I've met in America. I've known him now for nine years. And when I first met him, he was so pinner. So I used to always call him pinner. And then one time we're out with his family and I've known him for a couple of years at this point. He's like, what is that thing that you always call me in Canada in Canadian that <laughs> means I'm cute? I'm like, oh, it doesn't mean you're cute. It means like to go eat a burger. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> so it actually was kind of an insult. And he's like, for like two years, I've let you like openly call me pinner. And I was like, well, you never asked what it meant you just <laughs> assumed it was something endearing so it can go the other way like you know he just assumed it was some cute nickname that us Canadians use and I'm like no it meant like homeboy hit the gym and eat some more like, <laughs> so it's, 
I actually <laughs> was insulting him and he was totally getting it the other way around. So your Gorda awkwardness in vice versa in the Canadian version. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, he never let me call him Pinner after that. He did get a little jacked a little after, but I'm telling you it. You know, it, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. Sometimes there's a language barrier. <laughs> yeah. Language. Or, or another one. Years ago. Another one is, oh, I say, oh, she is my vieja. And vieja means old. And so she's like my old lady. Oh, and, that's cute. Well, I it does, but it doesn't sound like if I would call you, hey, old lady, bring me another beer. Like it doesn't. But sound I would be the called same. old my old lady even in in English. So it it does okay. kind of sound. But I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's hard to translate. It's just like when I for you, you're like trying to translate endearing things, and like for me, when I'm shit talking with my friends in public, I'm trying to translate. So I understand like what you're saying. You would like yeah. that connection, but Correct. you know it's so, crazy. So yeah. Like I have seen like my. Fam- like my family has married all over the map um you know so I have and friends I have friends that are married from all different cultures you know like I even know like friends of mine I know a girl who is actually Spanish who marries an Israeli and not only fully adopted like the Jewish culture she speaks better Hebrew than most people from Israel like you know and she didn't speak a word of Hebrew so you could be shocked how people can adopt that language thing or yeah. like t- take on another culture. Like I didn't know. It's so crazy. Like I maybe I'm so ignorant. Like I just always think everybody, every culture, and every religion, and every race gets along. And I really did not. Like I don't. I never experienced that in Vancouver. Like I never even had someone ask me what religion I was until I moved to LA. I, I had. I remember the first time someone asked me like, "Are you J or M?" And I was like, "What does that mean?" And people ask that here because really, like Jewish Persians like oh. stick within each mm. other and like the, the Muslims on the other and I had a Persian guy ask me that out here and I was like what does that mean I'm, I'm neither actually you know but yeah. I never experienced that so I actually never understood that movie when I lived in Vancouver that Zoolander I think it is where is that the one with the Jewish Muslim hairdresser with Ben um, yeah Ben Stiller and, yeah, uh, yeah 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 I never got that movie I was like what what is it <laughs> it made no sense to me I was really ignorant towards it so I didn't really know much about Judaism until I moved to, I didn't meet a lot of, the first Jewish guy I actually ever met was right before I moved to LA. And I loved it. He was from Israel and I loved everything about it. It was right before I moved to LA. When I moved to LA, I met so many Israelis. I was obsessed with the culture. I was like, oh my God, teach me everything about Jewish stuff. And I remember when I first started dating her, guys would ask me, would you convert if I needed to? And the thing is, you'd be amazed, like for the right person, I would adopt those cultures I don't know now at 37 if I would fully convert, you know, but I'm not sure, to be honest. I really don't know. But I, back then, I really was so enamored. Now I'm like, well, I also love being Christian. I would never give up Christmas. I could tell you that much. Um, but I don't, I see it more like the marketing Christmas. <laughs> uh, I, I hate Christmas. <laughs> well, I love Christmas. It's a big deal in my family. But, um, but I love learning about Judaism. I love all their holidays. They really symbolize a lot. And I yeah. would have absolutely no problem adopting a lot of that culture. And so I think, though, why, like, why I say foundation matters more than the culture is because you'd be amazed how often we take on and one another's culture, like the details, you know? Yeah. But the foundation has to be the same, like the same expectations about how you behave in front of someone's family or how you behave in public or how, like, those things have to be the same, I think. But the culture itself, the language is like people like to learn other languages. They like to adopt different things. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Again, there's, I, that's not a deal breaker. Religion for me also is not a deal breaker. Um, I grew up Christian. Um, I don't consider myself Christian. Um, I probably consider myself atheist like I really do not I I do not care about religion but um if I don't think I would convert for a girl like if she's like hey you need to be a catholic or you need to do this or you need I I would not but for me it would not be a deal breaker like hopefully she doesn't care that I don't I don't have a religion like I just don't but I grew up with a Christian family so I have like all those Christian values of growing up in a Christian family. 
Yeah. I mean, I really think at the end of the day, like how you respect one another's differences really differ, like different, like, I don't know, not different, but makes how you end up, if you can make it work. Like I spend most of my time with my girlfriend, Malta. She's a complete atheist. Like she grew up in Iran, you know, that what happened there really turned a lot of people against religion. And so she's a complete atheist. And like, we constantly like, we like whenever I talk to her, like we give each other advice. I'm not like, oh well, God, you know, like that's not her belief. So I don't throw that in her face. At the same time, she doesn't disrespect when I think, well, like for me, God intended it. This, you know what I mean? I mean, we yeah. joke about it a lot. Like I always say, like, oh, I prayed only for myself tonight. Whatever happens to you in LA, <laughs> like that's me. <laughs> but I made sure to pray for me. You're on your fucking own. We joke about it a lot. I say, my God, <laughs> not for you. You know. <laughs> We do joke about, but generally, besides the joke, like you just respect the differences, and I think that's really what's important. And you know, I mean, we kind of went off the topic of like just the different of like LA or Mexico and Canada, or whatever. But um, I mean, it really. But, does I mean, make but, a difference. but yeah, but I I don't think it's so off the topic. I mean, that's still it's still cultural differences. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that is true. I mean, yeah. But, and it wasn't yeah. on notes to talk about. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, good. I mean, I don't have anything yeah. left to say on that except that you know I really love dating in LA versus Vancouver. I'm not gonna lie. I much prefer this this culture. I kind of prefer this culture too, um, in a way where it's a bit more open. Like you don't have to be in a relationship, or you don't have to like put a label in order for you to just like start going out with someone like for you it's know. less stress it's like you're able to figure something out with somebody versus like trying to make the decision just based on like what you think they are you get to go through experiencing them and then decide if you want to date them that's yeah. what it sounds like for me it's just i get to sit on the bar stool and get hit on <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i wish that happened to me too but i mean it doesn't happen that often well, you never know. Maybe it'll happen after this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Maybe maybe the girl from the bar texts me back and she wants to go to the game with me. I can't wait to hear about that one. But also, maybe <laughs> one of our readers will use our actual email, which is the perfect X. That's just the letter X at hotmail.com. Ben is still single. We don't know what's going to happen with that girl. So. <laughs> Yeah, at the moment I'm still single. So you could yeah. you could be sitting at home getting an email. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe you are. You're still single. I know. I'm super single. I'm like the most single I've ever been in my life. It's, it's uh, yeah, well, I mean, if there's we're on the same boat. Single. Well, you at least have someone you're possibly interested in. If, if there's like a step below single, that's where I'm at. Like there's. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but you're going on dates. I'm not even going on dates. This is like the I first phone this number. Week, so I bet. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know you are going on dates. I'm no, no, I, I don't have one. I haven't had one since last Friday, and it's Wednesday I... now. <laughs> <laughs> I have not gone on a date in like months. But you're so... in a culture where people, are, guys, are supposed to be doing acts. Actual- being crocked and you're not even doing it like you're not online really you yeah, just barely hit on this girl which was great yeah. I really at, I mean I still can like really commend you for going even though she didn't message you back like that's amazing and and I and again I'm gonna still keep going like we me and my friend because it's like a uh, like a beer garden and you can take your dog and stuff like that and I always hang out with her and she has her dog um and we go there like maybe every other Sunday we and go to a dog you're park. Respecting her her distance, like you're not in her face, there should be no problem. Oh no, of course, and I'm not gonna like hang out at the bar and be like, "Hey, how's it going? Why didn't you text me?" No, that's. I would have called nine one one if I was here the moment I saw you, but <laughs> 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 I would have already been like nine one. Yeah. All right. So, okay, Okay. next week, we'll let everyone know we're talking about cheating. And also, don't forget to follow us on the perfect underscore X on Instagram. Uh, Subscribe and follow us online on your podcast, wherever you get it. And if you have any questions, concerns, or topics you want to discuss, you can email us at theperfectx at hotmail.com. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, nice. Yeah, nice talking to you. Talk to you next week. Good luck with the Thursday. Bye.
Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>